Supplementing with melatonin before training boosts growth hormone by 157%. Wow, I mean, forget injecting an IU of growth hormone per day, you know, throw your MK677 away because all you need to do to reach supra physiological levels of growth hormone is to disrupt your circadian rhythm and take a sleeping hormone before working out. I am here to tell you why that 150% number is misleading and why supplementing with melatonin will in all likelihood not improve your gains and may even harm them. And of course, I will provide you some compounds that are actually this effective at enhancing growth hormone production. Now, before we debunk melatonin's growth hormone and boosting properties, can we just take a second to acknowledge how this claim gives us insight into how ridiculous the whole natty or not debate is? No one considers melatonin unnatural, even though in supplement form, it's an exogenous hormone that is being promoted as quite the anabolic compound. Similar effects to a low dosage of HGH, and people are believing it. And instead of deeming it as unnatural, they're excited that they finally found a natural growth hormone hack. If anything, melatonin should be classified as unnatural, but not because it has any anabolic potency, but because it has the ability to, to manipulate your circadian rhythm in a way that cavemen did not have access to it. It magically makes your body think it's dark when it's not dark. It's like the most unnatural substance on the planet. And it's why you should be cautious before you blindly accept the claims from this study and start popping some melatonin as a pre-workout. In all likelihood, this will cause your melatonin secretion at night to be lower as a compensation. Not only may you sleep worse, but as many of you have guessed, melatonin levels and growth hormone release tightly linked. So if you supplement with melatonin during the day, your nocturnal growth hormone emissions are likely to decrease. And this brings us to how this study has been portrayed in such a misleading way. The 150% growth hormone increase, this is a temporary increase. All they did was measure growth hormone an hour before the workout and an hour after the workout. How long did growth hormone stay elevated? Uh, we don't know for sure, but my guess would be that it began to normalize within the next hour. Melatonin absolutely does not boost average growth hormone by 157%. So for that, you would need a high dose of MK677 or something like the CJC1295 ipamorelin combo. So these have been shown to actually boost average growth hormone. To get an idea of how insane it would be for melatonin to increase average GH by 157%, 10 milligrams of MK677 only boosts average GH by 75%. If you are interested in these actual growth hormone enhancers, 90 plus cheat sheet is where to go. It is in the description below. Hopefully I can save at least a few of you from wrecking your sleep cycle. But it's not as easy as you think to ascertain that a compound boosts average growth hormone. You can't just take a growth hormone measurement in the morning before supplementation and then the, another morning during supplementation or after supplementation like you could with a testosterone booster. Why? Because growth hormone is released in pulses. It can fluctuate dramatically throughout the day. From one hour to the next, growth hormone could surge or drop by like 10 to 50 X, okay? So to discover if average growth hormone increases, you'd have to get it tested like every hour of the day, or the simpler approach is to simply test your IGF-1 levels. Over time, growth hormone stimulates the liver to produce IGF-1. If average growth hormone increases, IGF-1 increases. The increase in IGF-1 is actually the predominant source of increased anabolism from MK677 and the growth hormone boosting peptides. In the melatonin study, we can see IGF-1 did not increase, but it appears like they just took the measurements over the course of like a few hours. It takes a couple days to a week of sustained increases in GH to really produce noticeable increases in IGF-1. But even if they gave melatonin to the participants for a month straight, do I think they would find IGF-1 levels noticeably increased? Probably not. Because here's what I think is going on. Remember, growth hormone is released in pulses. If you time a study right, you could get anything to temporarily produce a massive spike in growth hormone. That's why products like GF9 can get away with saying their amino acid blend boosts growth hormone by 600%. Because there are some studies where they gave participants amino acids and their growth hormone skyrocketed. And guys, these are just amino acids. And a scoop of protein powder contains way more amino acids than in these studies. You know, they claim that they're, oh, they're special amino acids that you don't normally get from whey protein powder. No amino acid is going to boost growth hormone by 600%. What's likely happening is either they got lucky 
and they timed the study right before a growth hormone pulse, in which case, if it were replicated, there would be a significant chance the amino acids actually caused a massive decrease in growth hormone, right? Going from a pulse to a valley. Or what the amino acids and the melatonin are doing is instantiating a growth hormone pulse. So they are essentially making the next pulse come sooner and fairly predictably so. So this is what I would bet is happening. And just because the next pulse comes sooner does not mean it increases average growth hormone whatsoever. So with testosterone, which remains more stable in the blood, if it's elevated for an hour, it actually increases average testosterone somewhat. But if GH pulses one hour, it may not pulse the next hour. But if it didn't pulse the first hour, it may have pulsed the second hour. So melatonin supplementation may just be sacrificing future growth hormone pulses for an immediate growth hormone pulse. Now, there are a couple studies, although the research is extremely scarce and not of the highest quality, where melatonin supplementation has been shown to increase IGF-1. So there's a human case study and a rodent study I found. In both cases, it appears melatonin was taken in very large amounts, higher amounts than I would ever be comfortable taking, because there's mechanistic data in rodent studies and even human controlled trials that show high doses of melatonin to decrease testosterone levels. Is this definitive? No. Am I cautious about it? Yeah. Low doses of melatonin seem to be fine. And apparently if you're an adolescent, you can tolerate high doses with only your prolactin increasing, but not your testosterone decreasing. But at the dosages of melatonin required to increase IGF-1 levels to any meaningful degree, you may be sacrificing testosterone to where the net outcome in, in your gym progress is just neutral or even negative. So the bottom line is if you need to supplement with a low dose of melatonin temporarily at night to reset your circadian rhythm, go for it. You know, it may be beneficial to your health. I've certainly done that before, but don't expect it to increase average growth hormone or make you stronger or buffer or leaner. And please respect the importance of sleep and do not attempt to get some marginal IGF-1 increase from megadosing melatonin before your workout. So yeah, check out the Natty Plus Cheat Sheet for the growth hormone boosting compounds that actually work. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.